All right, we are back in this room. We have come down from upstairs in the executive session, and technically we are still in executive session, so the chair is looking for a motion to... Um, I move we come out of closed session and we adjourn the special meeting. Thank you. That doesn't second. sound as soon as, I'm, <laughs> so you, you know about. as soon as I can figure out how to turn this new phone off, I will turn it off. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing that all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. So we are adjourned. Well, Alexia, just shut up. Well, <laughs> come here a minute. Please. You're at 109, David. <laughs> like Donna had to turn, turn that sound off. <laughs> <laughs> turn it off on the side. Huh? Just I just turned it off on the side. $1,200 some dollars. I can't get it <coughs> shut up. I had to have my admin help me with the car that the uh, house now. I couldn't. <laughs> I need one of my grandchildren here to help me. Yes, you do. Okay, so we are going to begin our four o'clock meeting. And Mr. Hewitt, is there any? Just uh, by way, by way of it. I'm good. By way of introduction, uh, Christine Brayman from the Wilmington District. Christine is the senior civilian deputy for the Wilmington District and is here to talk to the board about the 50-year project that's been going on for a while now. So, Christine? All right, hold it just a minute. I'm out of order. Excuse me, Ms. Christine. Is there any public comment before we start? Now, go ahead, Ms. Christine. <clears throat>
So if it's not in the president's budget, they kind of have tied their hands these days. So that's that's what's uh, changed in the last 10 years. Um, still goes, get signed into uh, uh, an appropriation bill and signed into law, and in theory, yeah, we're supposed to have money come 30 September. That has happened once in the last 10 years, twice in the last 23, um, and then we get money finally after that. Um, if it's kind of um, painting a, a gloomy picture, it is. Um, the basic premises of a lot of folks these days, and I understand why, is to get stuff completed that we have going now. Um, and for the operation maintenance funds that we have on the books, um, that we have to maintain it, and, and how can we get new projects on when we can't even maintain the ones that we have. That being said, there, there's two ways of um, getting something going, um, like a coastal storm risk management project here in Holden Beach. And that is um, either by work which is Congress's workaround from earmarks. What they do is they give the Corps of Engineers just a chunk of money by line item, investigations, construction, operations, and maintenance. And then we, we again, through this process, and everybody touches it, comes up with a list. But there's more flexibility of what can be put in that list. Uh, that list. Um, the other thing, it's both good and bad. When we have major disasters, Congress appropriates funds and they appropriate, appropriate it in a disaster bill and they tell each agency how much money they have. Again, sort of um, top dollar figures. So um, just a few weeks ago, Congress appropriated, uh, and President Trump signed into law, a disaster bill for communities potentially impact, that were impacted by uh, Hurricane Florence, Hurricane Michael, and a couple typhoons out in the Pacific. Um, the way it stands is we don't have to go uh, county by county where there's uh, emergency declarations declared, but we can look at the whole state. Um, regardless, your, um, you know, a project for your town would definitely fall into that category. Um, and we've started essentially doing this, this budget process, but up but squished down into a 60-day time frame because Congress said we had to have a list in 60 days. So um, we got the supplemental bill. It told us that we have, the Corps of Engineers have $35 million in investigations funds to study projects uh, that were in, you know, Impacted by Irma, or excuse me, Florence, Michael, or the typhoons again. I know from poking around, I say, should say, I know, I, I, I hear hearsay that we, um, there's one type, uh, one project maybe up in the uh, Pacific, um, one study up in the Atlantic, and then the rest of the studies being submitted for this 35 million dollars all comes from South Atlantic Division, which Wilmington is part of. Uh, Wilmington probably submitted 10 different studies. I mean, I have to have the exact number, you know, if I looked back. But uh, the studies uh, these days are for $3 million in three years. It 
is our new commitment to get things through the pipeline. So no more multi-million decade long project or studies. So the Corps has recognized that and done something to uh, address that. Um, so we could use all the money ourselves for our stu studies, Wilmington District. We could literally take that $35,000. We've got enough work that it could be all put against our projects. Um, I'll tell you that we did submit a project for Holden Beach uh, based on the old project, and I mean old, it was in 1966, which makes it And uh, we submitted that for a study under the supplement. Uh, I don't know how it's going to fare. Um, I do know that our South Atlantic region was, um, you know, thinking that Florence really impacted North Carolina. We didn't get any supplemental funding for the other bills, so they were going to try to kind of, you know, they thought their priority should be with the North Carolina studies and projects. Um, that being said, um, when we were having discussions with Atlanta, the uh, person in charge of all this in Atlanta threw out a real um, innovative idea that I had not thought of, but she's been do, doing this work for the last um, 18 months and has a long career with the Corps. She's been do, working all the supplemental that went to Florida primarily, but Puerto Rico, uh, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Um, so she's really seen the way through this. And she said to me, we should put this under construction. You have a have an authorized project. Okay, we need to do a validation report. But why don't we see if, if it can fly? And in construction, the Corps has $740 million to be able to spend on projects. Um, I'll, I'll tell you things that are in the queue that we also submitted on projects are things like um, Surf City North Topsail Beach, that's been authorized for about four years, waiting for money. Um, you know, uh, Bogue Banks, um, West Downsail Topsail Beach. Um, so we potentially would be taking a big chunk uh, of the money. Um, so there's more questions than I have answers on this. Um, as far as what the cost would be. Uh, but the good news is the federal government's going to come in here on the supplemental, and they're going to pay for 100% of the first cost of construction. So they'll build the beach, 100%. Um, no cost sharing from any of you, uh, except for the fact that the, the non-federal sponsor is always um, responsible for Lansy Smith's rights away. So, uh, you know, the, the construction easements, um, plans could be, you know, um, you all had to require uh, maybe some property uh, to get access to your beach. I haven't, you know, looked in detail at what the public access is to Holden Beach, but generally in order to have um, federal uh, Participation, federal funding, you have to ensure you have uh, public beach access. That access is a access point to the beach about once every quarter of a mile, and right in that vicinity, about 10 parking spots. Now, is there a little bit of flex in that? Sure. But the basic premise is you have to have clear access for, for the general public to get out to your beach, which of course is public. And, um, and that you have to have significant parking to do so. Um, and then we have a peak parking requirement on, um, that we look at the average
percentage over time, probably for July 4th. Uh, but that doesn't have to strictly go to this uh, <clears throat> 10 projects every quarter mile and things like that. And these would be the details we'd be discussing with you, whether we did a study or we did construction. Um, one of the things that we have to do, there's, there's a lot of rules to the supplemental money. Um, and I haven't seen the rules to this supplemental yet because they haven't been written. But I'm using what was in the 2018 uh, rules and things like that. And we have to sign um, like a feasibility cost sharing agreement or a project partnership agreement within 60 days. Um, so I think, did John? send you the, well, I think he sent you a draft of a feasibility cost share agreement that was potential, or did he? We actually um, sent that back to, uh, you know, we revised, or we worked. I knew you did the letter of intent, but did he actually send you a feasibility cost sharing agreement? No. We can, I, yeah, we can double check on that. And I have to find out, um, we've got, we've got a, an agreement right now that was executed by Charleston District for Folly Beach. We are doing a supplemental project for Folly Beach, South Carolina right now in the Wilmington District. Um, and I'll make sure, get a copy of that. We are not constructing any projects for anybody. So I have to go find like a, a construction type of, of template. Um, but basically, I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you, we all have to just kind of grab on and hold tight if we want something to happen because now is our chance and it may never come again. Um, and you, I'm asking that you trust that we're doing the best thing that we can for everybody. Um, and as far as Wilmington goes, you have a chance at some of that supplemental funding. Um, the project from 1966, I don't have a lot of detail on it. Um, I have excerpts of a chief's report, but that'll probably bore all you guys, so I gave Dave the homework to do. Um, but the bottom line, it, it says it calls for uh, a beach on, a well, Nourishment on 40,000 linear feet, uh, which Dave uh, tells me that's pretty near, you know, most of your beach. You probably stayed away from the, the inlets where, you know, that can be really uh, highly erodible. Um, and it specified a burn and a dune profile, dune height and an elevation for those, and there was not very much other engineering that went on in 1966. So I, I probably could have figured out that one. I, I dropped out of engineering after a few semesters, and I'm actually an economist with a master's in public policy. So I like to do the appropriations uh, thing. Um, I know that was kind of a quick dump on a lot of things, so I think I'm going to stop talking and let you all answer any question, ask any questions, and I will try to answer them to my best of my ability. Questions, anybody <clears throat> on the board? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've yeah, got we a, have a ton of questions. Yeah, we got a number <laughs> of questions. I do. Hey, go ahead, Peter. Come so down, come right now we're we don't have the an agreement and we we get disaster recovery through FEMA because from my understanding and Dave you you certainly correct me um, is because you have somehow had an engineered beach that you all have done the town's done therefore you're fe that's correct FEMA. for that portion yeah. of our engineering yeah. right. right so we would be replacing that right we would have no we would have no coverage from FEMA with that 4.1 miles. So we, we'd be switching from our engineered beach 
being covered by FEMA mm -hmm. to Army Corps of Engineers, this project, yeah. right? So that any and so so we we right now we had a uh, you know two hurricanes, mm -hmm. and we are we are waiting a um, twenty to twenty five million dollars okay. reimbursement for this for the, that engineered beach. Okay. Um, so I guess the question is, you know, what impact does it have on that? But also the question is, down the line, you know, what the impact, what the, how, how does the, uh, the, this new agreement work as far as replenishing after a, a disaster or after a storm? And, and, and does it have to go through this entire, is it a project or is it, I think you just mentioned it. Well, I call one a study and the other one a project Disaster. because there was two potential paths that we we honestly put you in there for both a little bit. Let's see what yeah. sticks. <clears throat> and the truth is, you can say when we go to sign an agreement, hell no, I don't want to do it. We just knew you wanted something, and we thought we're just gonna we're gonna get out there and put it in and you know try to work out some of the details later. But um, as far as the, the FEMA goes, that is a very good question. And I will have to look into that for you, um, but I certainly can, unless, Dave, you know off the top of your head. Um, what, what we've uh, been told in the past is very uh, general and basic mm -hmm. is that feds don't reimburse feds. So I, I know that there's always some idiosyncrasies involved there, and that's just kind of what, yeah. you know, I've learned. So if they dropped 20 or $25 million in your lap today? Well, it's reimbursement, right? So, oh, so we you've spent, already done it. We spent 17, well, 15 plus 2, mil, two million in interest yeah. on 4.1 miles of our engineering beach. Okay. How many years ago? Three? Three. Three. Okay. So we we spent that money. Okay. Yeah. So we 100 percent so funded by the. Gotcha. By the gotcha. 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 Yeah. So I would say that would be no impact if they're going to try to reimburse you for money spent. No impact for this that event that you already spent money. Uh, I don't I don't see that as being an issue at all. She's right. Um, I think. If well, we have you know we had the two storms that they're right. going to reimburse us for, right. and then uh, my understanding is it's. Okay. There's, there's no end date on that. If, if True. If you keep maintaining your engineered beach, FEMA, unless they change their policies or something, yes, right. there is no end date on it. Um, what our project would offer, and um, I, I guess this is, this is something to think about, but it sounds like there's no guarantee or timeliness in your FEMA. Um, well, looking at your chart, there's no guarantee or timeliness oh, either. I know. So. No, I know. I believe it. I know what you're saying. So. And you already um, told us there's only been two in the last how many years? The funding. So, so <laughs> but luckily, that's for the president's budget, the regular budget process, and um, the supplemental, like Florida. Or just they've got studies of beaches going on from like yeah really old authorizations it was like okay here we go we can get after things that have been sitting there um but um you're you right one i would presume that you wouldn't have to do your um 4.1 uh, mile beach because i i'm assuming we would include it and it would be some similar um uh, profiles there, but I don't know until you would look at your beach and, and that profile versus what's in the authorization. And if if we could, we just almost like assume, you know, right. your your local beach, and then um, what happens is. We wait for supplementals after these disaster bills. They often happen. Um, we have not, um, well, another thing that we, we've got a process called Public Law 8499. And it is for federal um, and coastal emergencies. And that is a process where we, we write a, a, a letter 
to all the towns that we've got um, coastal storm damage reduction projects with, and we say, hey, um, has your town gotten damage, and would you like us to perform a project uh, information report and submit it to, to our land office to see if we can potentially reimburse or get the uh, project rebuilt at 100% again so it doesn't have cost sharing under this um, I know I'm like throwing out. Oh, so disasters is usually 100%, you're saying, yes. instead of the cost share. So disasters okay. would be 100% if one of these project information reports is approved. Um, I can tell you with the straight face, we've done them more than once on Wrightsville right Beach and Carolina Beach, Curry Beach. We've gotten them, they've gotten money. Um, so, so that it is um, definitely Ocean Isle. Um, yeah, so Ocean Isle, actually, they got so little damage in New Orleans, it didn't meet the, the criteria of, um, there's a certain criteria that you have to meet, but it's a fairly low one, and then if you didn't, then your beach is in pretty good shape. Christine so is, is yeah, excuse me, yeah. pardon me. That's interesting because we, we, we've got a lot of damage. Yeah, damage, yeah. <laughs> is, that a, is that a shared expense, or is that a 100% reimburse that you're going to? The core is going to pick up. So after a disaster, um, we have to do a report to get the funding through our, um, you know, all the way up to our headquarters and people to go thumbs up on it. Um, but then when we come back, 100% of that damage is reimbursed. Hmm. Okay. Can I ask you a question? From, from what I've heard, and I just want to clarify this. Yeah, no problem. In the project, if if you, you do the project where you restore the beach, then that beach is no longer eligible for FEMA reimbursement on the subsequent storm. Is Correct. That, okay. That's kind yeah. of what we're talking, sort of okay. double dipping at that. So yeah. in the project that you're proposing, since we already have an engineered beach mm -hmm. that is qualified for FEMA reimbursement, could the project that you're proposing only encompass the area of the beach that isn't an engineered beach currently, so that we would retain our ability to get FEMA reimbursement while getting the benefit of your project. For Nine Mile Beach, 4.1 is now. I had the same question. You did. Although, again, would you want, you know, get 40,000 linear feet, and that project is So it's kind of like asking you, do you want your money from FEMA or do you want your money from the core? Because you could. Well, yes, but, but if we took it from the core, that could be a one-time only project. So that the next time, like, like for argument's sake, we, okay, had, there we, go. We, we, had, we had a lot of money from Matthew, and now we've lost a lot of the sand, and now we're going to be reimbursed by FEMA. Mm -hmm. So why would I want to take your project on my engineered beach and forfeit the ability to have FEMA funds come in the future. That's not a gamble that I think is... is We've already made that one-time investment and that 4.1 miles. More than, yeah. one, with more than one time. So I guess in getting to the point of more than one time, and if I'm really thinking, okay, the Corps just can't get you any money after it does the nine miles. Um, you'd be eligible right then and there for nine miles if a storm came then and uh, and we have that reimbursement process um, and if the core stopped maintaining it after that and you went back to your four miles then after you did your engineered beach again you'd be eligible again you know what I mean? So I, I guess my, my question was, can the project be structured so that the engineered beach portion of Holden Beach is not included in the project, but the two ends of Holden Beach are included in the project? Could, could you structure the project that way? Or do we have to have it the whole beach? That's a good question. My gut feel is no, but um, I'll ask. So we have an east end, a west end, and a central reach. Okay, yep. So this is your central reach. Right. All right. I will ask about 
So I would I, also uh, tie it in with that. If we were to do that, and then we wanted to go back to FEMA, or if something happened with the Corps and they said, we're not doing that much anymore, so go back and ask for FEMA, would we have defeated the engineered beach by not having done the rules of maintenance in the time period? Because we have to do studies now, uh, Mr. Hewitt. We have to do work annually on the beach to maintain the status of being engineered, correct? We have to do measurements and monitoring and in order to remain an engineered beach. Well, I mean, there, there's a there's a, a bundle of activities that you know, is just beyond. It's not just monitoring a survey and a plant grass. We have to grass. do that in order to stay a engineered beach classification. Am I correct? Those are a few of the activities. Yeah, you you still have to put sand on the beach. Uh, but you also got to do other spend other yeah, money to that's maintain correct. this. Mm -hmm. And the question would be, if we were to stop doing the required maintenance now or the measurements and the monitoring because the CORS program doesn't require yeah. that, right. okay. would we then probably lose our status with FEMA? Perhaps. Um, I really, you know, I can't really speak for FEMA themselves. But, and I don't know what kind of burden that is cost-wise or resource-wise on the town. If that, if this is Chris's personal <laughs> opinion and not my uh, official opinion, but I, if it wasn't that much, I'd keep doing it anyways, just to. Well, uh, if if you don't sure. keep if you don't keep monitoring, how after a disaster would you come to the core and say we think we're eligible for? Yeah, some we, some we re-nourishment. Some surveys and also we do. Yeah, we you do, do monitoring right. too, but it may not be as much as FEMA wants. Right. You know, yeah. so that I can't, I can't, I don't know right now, like certainly off the top of my head what the difference, but the difference in core monitoring and FEMA monitoring would be. And are your projects only related to, to name storms? Uh, what happens for just annual erosion if we didn't have a name yes. storm but we had severe... Yes. Erosion. Well, this process is just for a name storm. Oh. Um, this funding <coughs> process, I'll say, is just for a name storm. Certainly, any sort of studies or projects that we have, we look at long term erosion. That's a component of it, along with putting um, suites of storms um, on the shoreline and, and figuring out what the uh, loss would be both from um, long-term erosion and storm-induced erosion along with, you know, wave-induced damage and that sort of thing. So we look at both. Now, I, I can't say, well, they did talk about long-term erosion in the 66 report. Yeah, erosion factors are, are, are a hot button for us, especially yeah. on the east end of the island. Okay. Well, we know the erosion factors are, are greater on the east end of the island. Mm -hmm. And non-storm related now, non-storm related. Mm -hmm. And it's ever so critical for us to understand exactly, and I like to say, can somebody put up the red flag, or when does the red flag go up when the erosion factors turn critical? Another term would be the threshold of the erosion. I tell you, erosion <laughs> and I got a smile. It's very tricky. <laughs> going to be like a high hazard area um, you know. right right but that's but that is ever so critical to us the east end uh-huh because we didn't and I'll, I'll say it we didn't receive the replenishment the sand replenishment on the east end for whatever reason we didn't but the fact is i know i went down the year yesterday on the high tide and i i noticed uh not too much sand on the beach. I saw a lot of water. So that, that, that threw up a red flag to me. Yeah, I, I guess I guess I guess I had another question. You had mentioned the 
project was submitted for Holguin Beach, whatever year that was. Do so you have so any details associated with the contents of that project? I were? sure do. I gave uh, David? Dave one, and okay. I, if you care to... Just some of the highlights? I have some additional um, documents. What I did was I excerpt stuck, uh, you know, what was important. And uh, it wasn't a really long document, 1966. Anyway. 1966. But yes, yes, I do. Thank you. And, and the, the authorizing language is as simple as it's 40,000 feet. Um, but the berm is at 15 foot um, above mean sea level. And mm -hmm. that the dune has a top width of 25 feet and at elevation 20 above mean sea level. And I have no idea how that equates to your current project right now or, or the profile on your current beach, but that was that's what was authorized in 66. There is a, yeah, I got a rough template there, but um, it doesn't appear that there was a lot of engineering done in 66. Okay. Is there anything in that report that states how much of that project was completed to those requirements? So none of it? <laughs> right, the only, the only um, community that has um, a project completed and they took a, 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 a full study look at it uh, was Ocean Isle, and they have had it constructed. None of the other beaches um, have had any, uh, any construction of any part of. Yeah, the reason, I, reason I'm asking is because I was here, and I don't remember any of it. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, the project just was authorized. That doesn't mean it was uh, constructed. And I don't know, I don't know if we have the documents that somebody said, oh, it was too much. Because actually, I was surprised that it was like a $6 million price tag for the total first cost in 1966. I'm like, gee, that's kind of expensive for 66, like <laughs> $6 million plus dollars. So they, Ocean Isle completed the project? They did, yes. We're, we, and, uh, we nourish it but, but right now, and, yeah, but, yeah, okay, and that's my question. Because right now, Ocean Isle erosion is, is bad. They're east ended. They're east ended. The erosion is terrible. And they, well, is they, that not where they were going to put their trombone grind? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, in my opinion, they're going, they're going to an extreme to, to try to resolve that issue, whereas we, we wouldn't do that. We, we decided not to do that. Um, and they're they're even you know they've got other permits to supplement yeah, this plan. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't sound like the plan with those two you know extreme for a groin and supplementing. What what happened to the plan? I mean the plan was to um, they built they, they constructed the plan there's and and they're in, in the plan now I would assume and it's not being so. Done. I'm not aware. Of issues other than right at the inlet, which was not really part of our project, because we know that's going to erode away the second you put it down there. Uh, a lot of times, um, and they had, they didn't have even any erosion damage from Hurricane Florence. So I would say the project's working. The project is not tip to tip of the island. Right. Yeah, the engineered beach is a defined area. And neither area. would yours be. Correct. And it would be because mm -hmm. they, they're high hazard inlet zones for a reason. Mm -hmm. And is that excluded from the projects? Um, I don't know exactly if there was a, an exact um, profile where that 40,000 foot um, linear feet were on, but as Dave tells me, 40,000 uh, linear feet won't cover to it's about 2,500 feet from each inlet. I mean, you know. 5,000 5, feet short. Yeah. And, and you also have to remember in 66, the inlets were in a different place. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. true, too. Yep. But yeah. still, generally speaking... So, so just 
based on that part of the discussion, what I asked earlier is not even viable because I was talking about placing the project on both ends of the island to benefit both of the Lockwood Folly and any inlet. And now we're saying that, that you, you wouldn't have a project that would include the ends of the island. Correct, like, you know, okay. maybe a half a mile. Okay. Uh, so, know, so, so then it makes sense. As Dave's trying to help me orient the no, island no. and what way. So, yeah, at <coughs> the very tips, no, it wouldn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, it, it makes it a little simpler for us because we have to determine whether we would prefer to have your project or prefer to have the current FEMA reimbursement capabilities in place. It's one or the other, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What um, what's the next step you're asking for us? So, so right now, I'm, I'm not asking any. Um, <laughs> okay. but the um, one thing that Dave did was he um, wrote a letter of intent expressing the town's interest, interest. in having um, this studied, and that made you know that was a, a good thing that we could put into. Um, our database, and we're now saying we're going to try to budget for it. Um, that, that letter of intent helps us to be able to budget for it. Uh, I can tell you for sure it is in the supplemental. It, it's in the supplemental list that we, Wilmington District, sent to our, our Atlanta regional headquarters. I don't know what will happen when it gets to Headquarters, the Assistant Secretary Army, uh, the Assistant Secretary Army of uh, Civil Works, or um, to Office of Management and Budget. But um, we have that now. Now, if you do get selected, we're going to have about 60 days to decide: Do we want to go into this? Do you want to go into this? No one. Not necessarily too much cost to you, um, and knowing that, well, if you chose to back away from this project at some point in time, um, you could. Um, you know, the, the only place where I see um, potential real risk for you, and hopefully um, you have halfway decent access from CAMA and other things, um, you know, to your beaches. Um, again, that, that uh, parking and access that we would require. Um, but if we get uh, just, if we get chosen just for a study and not for the construction, you know, we can look at a lot of, a lot more things than, you know, and, what's and the, on the books right now. Excuse me. And the public uh, beach access, access, did you say every quarter mile? Yes. It's, um, and yeah. approximately 10 parking spots at each of those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. I mean, there's a little wiggle room on that, but it can't be every half a mile. You know? yeah. uh, and would the program fund those, the purchase of land to make parking and things like that? No, that, is, no, that's that would be your, your all's responsibility. That's why I said it's the biggest risk yeah. potential yeah. to you if you you know, purchase some sort of land and then the project didn't come, I don't know how much of a risk you feel that is. Yeah. As, a, as a matter of fact, some of the guidance we've seen uh, before from the real estate office is that, one, you don't, you don't start acquiring easements or the parking areas until there's a construction um, Authorization. Okay. An authorization, <laughs> excuse me. Right, right. And the project construction right. agreement and right. PCA. Right. Um, I don't know, they may call them PPAs now, partner, project partnership agreements. They okay. change titles a little bit <laughs> frequently. But you, you're, you're right, Dave. And that's, uh, yeah, you'd have some time. Yep. For, for the public access, is the quarter of a mile the distance? from one access point to another or the distance that a person wouldn't have to travel? Because that makes a big difference. If you're in the middle, 
the access points could actually be a half a mile away rather than a quarter mile away because it would be a quarter mile either way. So that, that makes a big difference when I, when I hear that. And this question has come up before, yeah. and 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 the, and and it's the answer. As a matter of fact, you know, you've got to remember we're, we've been in the GRR process, and much of this data um, exists already, um, and to include okay. where those access points are, and specifically where at Holden Beach they would be required. So that 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 answer is yes and yes. Yeah, it's, it's, and then even the 933 project. We, we don't have a problem. We don't have an well, existing yeah, problem. Sure. We have to look at the GRR, but on the west end, there could be a couple of questionable spots, yeah. but I think it would be pretty minor. Okay. That, that was my thought. I thought this one starts to look in good shape. Yeah, if you're a quarter of a mile apart, it's that most anybody's got an eighth of a mile to get to an access. If these things are a quarter of a mile apart. Yes, yeah, but we'll, yeah. we'll talk. And that would be, what, 36 for the island, 36, 38 for the island? Yeah, but, but some uh, for I mean, clearly, we have no problem here. There's yeah, just some that you might have on the west end. Anybody uh, walk more than a quarter of a mile. That's why it's a half a half mile a between them. That's what it is. It a half so a mile. It's, a, it's a half a mile. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, so that, that makes it easier to meet that requirement. So, thank you for correcting me on that. Yeah, it's about a the bottom line for these is that both the both programs, the FEMA and your program, are subject to appropriations annually. Yeah. Yep. Everything is. Mm -hmm. If Uncle in decides the no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we always have that little tag subject to the availability funds. Um, <coughs> you know, I can tell you, I'm gonna nourish your beach at 100 percent for 50 funds. years. And uh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I just saw uh, somebody who was on LMB or Congress willing to do it. And, uh, nope. It's kind of like the intercoastal waterway money and the inlet money. <clears throat> yeah. How many change depth requirements, change obligations altogether. Just makes it go away. <coughs> Kind of like town budgets on a grand scale. <laughs> Any more questions? No, I'm good, thank you. Uh, I have one or two. I, I'm a Fran uh, Wham coastal engineer with the Black and Technology Management. We've been working with the town for Yeah, you look very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been at the NG Byway conference. Or okay, yeah. Uh, it was a bar area identified for that. 1966 project, or? Oh, I don't think no. so. I'd have to look back at it. I was skimming it, okay. and you know, and. Uh, so, so could you, would you rely on the, the GRR study, the pretty much 50 year project you studied back in 2012, 2013, where they identified you know, Jay Virtuals and, and Adam Frying Pan? Likely. Likely. So that's, could you, are you going to try to mill? You know, so that you're going to use that cheap, the 1966 report as your project, and then I guess you just draw a lot from that, that your, the GRR study that's... Yeah, that would be the best I could say right here, right now. We do not have a plan, obviously. Okay. We don't have funding, so I'm just throwing out there, hey, people, think about this. You know? Think about the resources. All right. Think about whether we need to AE out things. Okay. Um, you know. Sure. Uh, and, and for... Uh, so the study is, you know, three years, three million dollars. Yeah. But what would be the timeline potentially for the, for the project? Okay, so I'm going to assume the project's under fifty million dollars. Okay. Just yeah. so in that case, we'd have about nine months to do our pre-construction engineering design, and then four years to complete. Uh, the construction, and I'm just, I'm not saying that's how long we will or will not take, but those are the uh, stipulations that we were given in guidance for the supplemental and team. You know,
know, they said if the project is this big, max these amount of time, if it's this big, so I'm, I'm assuming, you know, under $50 million. But maybe I'm wrong on the $59. Million. Uh, uh, Dave, was the, for the 1966, was there a volume where they just had a... I, ha I haven't dug into the 66 at all. But the but the the supplemental funding actually appropriates the entire amount yes, required the for the. Government does it 100% yeah. Our yeah. Right. Um, well, yeah. for the study also. Oh, the study yeah. Well? yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, and that was that was some of the uh, oh, okay. every so year. It is something a little deja vu, but yeah. it's all up in right. front right now. Okay. Right. So both That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. I think your question was, were there any volumes in this yeah, study? Yeah. It's all it's all length okay, and so dollars. There, there aren't any cubic yards in there. I, he was 
Yeah, it was just uh, the, the berms. 60, 60 the berms dollars. this high and it's this long, yeah, but there's no that volumes. That, that 50 million, yeah. Uh, price tag. But I, we can, I can look at that. We can not, not, in, not in what you brought. I'm sure there's an attachment that has it in it. Project and construction. To be honest, I'm very earnest about yeah. that. I'm missing. I'm missing that. But I'm not. I am not your um, contracting officer, and I know I don't direct you and can't direct you and everything. <laughs> but you know, if, if there's anything that I can do, and, and I know the core has, you know, like in-kind services where, where you can, you know, subcontract out some small items to the project. We certainly would be looking for uh, various ADs if and when things really, if we get more than one or two studies and we get more than one project, we would be looking for help because we don't have the resources to do it all in house. Okay. So, so if we do a study, we'd still do whatever we're doing right now in parallel. Then, from what I understand, you could never be funded for a project. What happens? Can we still continue to so, do what we're doing now? You know, a uh, good question you asked, and, and, and what I didn't point out is the 1966 project was authorized for 10 years, even though the analysis was over a 50 year period. Um, that was automatically extended to 15 years by um, an act in 1976. Um, further extensions to 50 years were done on a project-by-project -project basis, like Wrightsville Beach and Cape Carolina Beach got extended in the, the 90s to the 50 years. But you, it needed to be project-by-project. Project. So we have a 15-year authorization on the appreciate that information, yeah. but <laughs> I'm talking about what our circumstances we're doing, you know, our engineered beach FEMA, mm -hmm. we do the study, and we're still FEMA, right? And then after the study, is there a... Construction, federal construction. That which, may, which according to the North Topsail, may never happen. All right. Could be FEMA. Is, is FEMA still validated? Until we, until no, until no. until you spend federal core construction money, you're still maintaining with your own funds. I would say I'd what? go even beyond that and say a uh, spending federal construction money. Yes. To award the first initial contract. Right. Yeah. And so and, and that applies to. Public access, parking, you know, right. everything. Okay, thank you. Until you get the construction funds, okay. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions? Have we, Anybody in the audience have any no, questions? No. I was like, oh, I hope there's some supplemental money coming in the back. <laughs> um, what would uh, 
dredging costs have gone up so astronomically yeah. um, and way beyond any sort of typical um, just price index. Um, we really need to get somebody uh, with some, some you know, cost engineering uh, background for these type of projects in particular to uh, escalate that. Is there a, uh, another thing? Is there a definition of public access? Because my husband has this thought, and I'll have him describe it for you, that you know, we sort of abandon our house here for the summer and rent. There are 12 people at my house right now. I call them the public. I don't know them. Happen to know them, they've been coming for 12 years. But I mean, there's nobody for me. We don't see each other on the weekends or anything. They go back to wherever they live. Is that considered? No. Is the public has to drive across the bridge? Yes. Because we have such a swelling of population in the mm -hmm. summer that I call the public. Understood. But it has to be uh, official accesses. Um, you know, adjacent to properties that goes from the street to the beach, and it has to have an associated parking. But yeah. a lot of private homes have that. There's a house on. There's a house on. It's not public. Not clear exactly what you were meaning. But with less, why consider those people that I don't have one of those boardwalks that goes all the way to the beach? But if I did, let's say, and there are people renting it. No, no, you can't do that. That's private access that you're talking about. That's not public. They're renting the house. They're renting the house. They're renting the house. They're living here this week. How far away does the public parking have to be? What's a reasonable distance that the public parking is from the access? It's 400 meters. It's a, it's a quarter of a mile. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's better than me. Yeah. I went and then just asked Alvin today. I'm like, so Alvin, I don't so think we allow access. parking on the right of way on every side street. Right. That's right. That's public parking. Uh, yeah. Ocean, Ocean, it doesn't have to be like all sophisticated. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as long as you don't ban it and it's kind of legal in there. Yeah. If you want to get a good idea of what public parking can look like ocean isle beach they've got a mix of how it's done they've got they've got the dedicated you know quentin type lot you know on the ocean front then they also have side streets that are one-way streets that also uh, 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 meet the requirement there you know i don't venture over to brunswick county Part of the beach is very much when I live in New Hanover, I'm sorry. It's okay. Maybe I'd like to. Um, but yeah, definitely like um, even Curry Beach. Uh, there, it's not, again, very sophisticated parking. Literally, some is, it's a grass area that they parked on right adjacent to the road, but it, they must have a public easement there, allowing them to, to drive, you know. So it doesn't. You don't have to have showers, and you don't have to have this and that, and anything pretty. It's just public access, truly. You know that anybody could come there that wanted to for a very simple amount, and a simple maybe parking fee, maybe not. You know, we don't, we don't, um, we don't require. You know, well, we don't exclude if you all had parking fees or user day passes up in Jersey. Sometimes. I used to work up there. They had like little user passes that you pin onto your. Right, so Beach is is a is a good example of how they do on street parking there, paid yep. parking, and that and that 
meets the requirement. Yep. Along with their, some of their big lots, right. the L-shaped lots. <clears throat> All right. We have anything else? If not, we're going to thank you very much for being here today. Yes, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Very informative. Not a problem, and I'll, you know, Dave knows how to get a hold of me if you have any questions, and I know how to get a hold of other people if I don't have the answer. Okay. I and would say to you that the town of Holden Beach wants to work with the Corps of Engineers, and certainly with your being here today is a good example of how we can exchange ideas and communicate. We need to both, both sides need to improve, and we'll always need to improve, but it's appreciated what we have, and thank you very much. Yeah, and I'll, you know, at another time, I'd, you know, have any, uh, have time to hear any comments you'd like to make about other projects. All right, thank you so much. Is there a motion we adjourn? So moved. Second, anybody? Second. Discussion hearing now, all in favor say aye. 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 We adjourn. Thank you all for being here, audience.